Prepare to be awed by the sobering reality you're about to be shown. Look closely at that chart. China, today's mighty nation of 1.4 billion people, is projected to lose 50% of its population in the next few decades. Imagine 50% of your neighborhood vanishing into history. This new chart illustrates China's birth and death rates over the past six decades. Now, during most of this period, the number of births was quite high. However, in 2022, China experienced more deaths than births, leading to a population decrease for the first time in 60 years. Understanding why this is significant requires considering China's role as a global manufacturing powerhouse, which owes much of its strength to the country's large population. Roughly 35% of China's economic output comes from manufacturing. Even after the population decline in 2022, China still boasts a sizable population of approximately 1.4 billion people, which is close to its historical peak. Nevertheless, projections suggest that by the end of the century, that number may reduce by almost half. China's population decline can be attributed to a combination of factors, including historical growth patterns and governmental policies. Today, China is working to reverse this trend and stabilize its population, though there are concerns that it may be too late. In the 1950s, under Mao's leadership, China faced a devastating famine, resulting in the loss of 30 million lives. This event is evident on the birth and death rate charts, marked by a sharp increase in deaths and a corresponding drop in births. Subsequently, a baby boom followed, coupled with advancements in healthcare that lowered infant mortality rates. This led to families having, on average, six children. Recognizing the rapid population growth as a concern, the Chinese government introduced the so-called Later, Longer, Fewer policy, emphasizing delayed marriages, increased birth intervals, and fewer overall births. Now, while this led to a decline in the birth rate, it did not meet the government's desired levels. In 1980, the extreme one-child policy was implemented, restricting most families to just one child. This policy was enforced through stringent measures, including campaigns involving sterilization, IUD insertion, and induced abortions. Now, while these efforts began during the later, longer, fewer era, they reached their peak severity under the one-child policy, resulting in the sterilization of 20 million individuals and nearly 15 million induced abortions in a single year. Ultimately, China achieved its objective of controlling population growth. China soon realized, though, that their stringent population policies had been too effective. To maintain a stable population over the long term, each couple should ideally have around 2.1 children, a threshold known as the replacement rate. This accounts for one child replacing each parent, with the 0.1 compensating for children who do not reach adulthood. However, for over three decades, China's fertility rate has fallen well below this 2.1 mark. In an attempt to address this, in 2016, China lifted the one-child policy. They briefly experimented with a three-child policy, and in 2021, they allowed families to have as many children as they wished. Despite these efforts, the situation has not significantly improved. One major factor is the distinctive family structure established by the one-child policy, known as the 421 model. This means that a couple is responsible for caring for four parents above them and one child below. In contrast, most countries have a wider range of family structures, varying from three children to none. The 4 to one model places increasing pressure on millions of only children to support their aging parents and grandparents, making it more challenging to consider having multiple children, especially given the rising cost of living. A recent survey revealed that over half of young people opt for just one child due to financial and work-related pressures. Despite various incentives like cash subsidies, extended maternal leave, and support for kindergarten expenses, these efforts have had limited success. These substantial expenses and lifelong commitment associated with raising a child make it difficult to quantify in monetary terms. 
China's population challenge extends beyond childbirth, though. It also involves maintaining a balance between the young and old. A glance at the population pyramids, which depict age distribution, illustrates this difference. For instance, countries with rapid population growth, such as Kenya, have a wide base, representing numerous young individuals and a narrower top. Conversely, countries with slower growth, like the Philippines, still have a triangular shape, but the contrast between the top and bottom is less pronounced. In contrast, China's pyramid shows a narrow base, signifying fewer babies, and a sizable top, indicating a larger population of elderly individuals. This is a positive outcome of improved health and living standards. Persistently low fertility rates, coupled with ongoing population aging, are shaping China's demographic landscape. By 2050, the population pyramid is projected to exhibit a top-heavy structure, exacerbating China's population decline, contracting labor force, and placing the nation in a uniquely challenging position. During the 1980s, China emerged as a hub for foreign investments, benefiting from its low-cost manufacturing and robust export sector. Within a generation, it ascended the global economic ranks, becoming one of the world's leading and fastest-growing economies by GDP. However, this economic transformation not only led to further declines in birth rates, but it also failed to ensure equitable prosperity for all citizens. When examining GDP per capita, a crucial measure of living standards, China lags behind high-income countries. Despite rapidly becoming a major global economy, China remains classified as a middle-income nation. Many, particularly in the rural areas, have not reaped significant benefits from China's economic surge. Additionally, China has yet to establish essential safety nets to support its aging populace. Constructing the necessary social infrastructure, including health care and pension programs, requires time. This endeavor is becoming increasingly challenging amidst a decelerating economy. A sluggish economic pace will inevitably redefine China's role as a manufacturing powerhouse on the global stage. This shift will have ramifications for both China and the international community, constraining Chinese ambitions and global influence due to internal resource limitations. Now, while China shares this demographic trend with several Asian and European countries also experiencing population declines, what sets China apart is the rapidity with which these changes have occurred. It was only four decades ago that China leveraged its burgeoning population to ascend as an economic superpower, all the while endeavoring to curb population growth. With China's population growth now officially halted, the nation must contemplate its future trajectory not only as a global superpower, but also in terms of the well-being of its domestic citizens. Over the past few months, the Chinese economy has experienced a significant deceleration. This has raised considerable concerns worldwide, given that China is the second largest economy globally. It plays a pivotal role as a major consumer of raw materials and a significant manufacturer of goods, which are subsequently bought by other companies for resale. Therefore, China's slowdown is worrisome, not only for China itself, but also for the global economy. Recent trade data for August reveals a continued year-on-year -year decline in both exports and imports for China. This is particularly troubling, as China had initially set a growth target of 5% for 2023. With only four months left in the year, achieving this goal presents a substantial challenge. The Chinese yuan has also experienced a notable decline against the U.S. dollar, depreciating by almost 8% over the past seven months. This devaluation is closely tied to the economic difficulties that China is facing. While a weaker currency could theoretically boost exports, the data shows that China's exports have not seen a corresponding increase. A crucial factor contributing to China's economic struggles is the property sector. Over the last two decades, the property market had been a cornerstone of the Chinese economy, accounting for a significant portion of its GDP. However, due to government policies limiting access to debt for property developers, many are now facing financial difficulties, impacting the completion of housing projects. Furthermore, China's stockpile of diesel, primarily used for industrial purposes, has remained high, indicating that industry demand has not met expectations. 
This suggests that a significant economic rebound in the near future is unlikely. Compounding China's economic challenges are environmental factors. The country has faced severe typhoons, leading to substantial disaster relief costs. This adds further strain to an already troubled economy. Japan, heavily reliant on trade with China, is also feeling the effects of China's economic downturn. The Chinese government has expressed concerns about the potential negative impact on Japan's fragile economic recovery.